Hey guys, I'm super excited to show you a new cool feature I just added to the advanced stylized material. A fake shadow effect powered by distance field ambient occlusion. This effect is perfect for blending meshes together and highlighting their shapes, giving your stylized material a more dynamic and detailed look. Plus, I've built this handy tool that makes it super easy to use. Just pick the meshes you want, tweak the sliders and adjust colors right from the widget. In this video, I'll walk you through exactly how to use it. Okay, I'm assuming you are already familiar with the shader and its features, but if not, just please take a moment to check out my previous videos as they cover everything you need to know to get started. And before we dive in, make sure distance fields are enabled in your project settings. This is usually on by default. And next, if you've already been tweaking with material parameters, double check if the use DFAO option is enabled. It's also on by default. And while we are here, if you know that you won't need this feature, turning it off can help save some performance in future. All right, let's open up the widget. You will find it in the blueprint folder in the advanced stylized framework. Just right click on the ASF tools and select run utility widget. You can resize the window and dock it whatever works best for you, but personally I usually prefer to leave it as it is undocked. So the tool helps you to set up primitive data for all the actors you've selected. And why primitive data? Well, I chose this approach instead of exposing a bunch of parameters in material instance because it's more efficient. Primitive data lets you control the effect on a per actor basis while using the same material instance. This is especially handy since the meshes can vary in sizes, shape or even placement. And without this, you'd need to duplicate materials just to fine tune the effect. Now, Distance fields, while incredibly useful, aren't always perfect. The data they provide can sometimes produce visual errors or imperfections, especially in tricky situations like, you know, overlapping objects or some specific rotations. Primitive data gives you the flexibility to make adjustments and compensate for these inconsistencies, ensuring your effect looks great in any scenario. All right. Once you've selected a static mesh, you can start tweaking the fake shadow settings. The most two important sliders are intensity and distance. Intensity is simply a multiplier for the effect, while distance controls the size of the shadow or gradient in world units. The higher the distance value, the more of the object falls into shadow. Simple, right? And this is exactly why using primitive data makes sense. Those rocks need a much higher distance setting than, say, uh, a coffee cup. Now, let's talk about the falloff slider. Falloff controls the gradient of the fake shadow, letting you adjust how smooth or sharp the transition appears. Then there is the bends or bending parameter, which determines the smoothness or the number of let's call it steps in the gradient. For example, a value of zero creates a smooth, continuous gradient while higher values introduce distinct steps. If that sounds familiar, it's because it's the same logic as in the bending feature available in the material for blending colors. As I adjust this full of slider now, you can see how these changes affect shadows look. I've added a custom color picker with sliders for hue, saturation, and volume, so you can precisely choose the shadow's color. There's also a dynamic material that previews your color selection almost in real time. And if you ever work with UMG, you've probably noticed that while the Unreal Engine has, you know, the built-in color picker, you can't use it in a widget for some reason. Anyway. Let me know if you like a separate video on how I built this custom color picker. And here you can also use the color presets to quickly swap the default black shadow to something else. Uh, and ex expose the color change option because you might want to use distance fields I'm in occlusion for, you know, other applications like bounced lighting, for example. And 
while we're on the topic for colors, I've added two blend modes, normal and overlay. These are similar to the blending modes you'd find in, you know, Photoshop or Affinity Photo. The blend mode determines how the fake shadow interacts with the base color you've set in the material instance. Normal simply layers the color evenly, while the overlay enhances contrast. Each mode gives you a different visual result, so make sure you pick the, be the one that best fits to your scene or artistic style. And finally, there are two last checkboxes. Include procedural effects and effect distance fields. The first one lets the shadow blend with all the procedural effects uh, you've enabled in the material instance, like, you know, fake reflection or fake directional light. And if it's turned off, those effects won't show through the shadow. The second checkbox, Effect Distance Fields, is actually the only setting here that doesn't modify the primitive data of your selection. It's just a shortcut to the same property you can find in the Details panel. This setting can really change how the shadow looks, especially on more complex shapes. For example, with this armchair, you can see how the AO disappears on the seat when I turn it off. And now, the effect is only visible on the bottom part. Alright, so once you are happy with the settings, you can apply them to different meshes. Or use this as a starting point and continue tweaking other values. There's also the clear button, which lets you turn off the effect completely. And I use it for, you know, comparing how the mesh looks with or without the fake shadow. And here's a bonus tip for you. You can use other meshes to influence distance fields while keeping them invisible. So let me show you what I mean. Just grab a mesh, disable render in main pass, render in depth pass, also turn off casting shadows and make sure to disable collisions too so the player won't interact with it. It's also a good idea to rename the object so you can find it later as it'll be tricky to select otherwise. Then just move it close to your objects and you can see it's like painting with shadows. Okay guys, so that's how you use the new fake shadow effect in the advanced stylus material pack. I hope you found this useful and I showed you how you can add more detail and creative freedom to your materials. Be sure to check out the pack on the Fab Marketplace if you're interested. I really appreciate all the new subscriptions I've gotten recently. Thanks so much and see you next time.